You know what I mean? A good workout doesn't take that long, <laughs> does it? When you train intense. Now, could you imagine if I had pushed you? We wouldn't have lasted but 30 minutes, maybe. If I'd have been like shortening your rest periods, get back on. Because when you shorten rest periods, it, it adds intensity. Because, you know, you're still out of breath doing the next set. That happens, yeah. but that happens as you get in better shape. Hi, my name is Cherie, and this is Life is Cherry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fitness Friday. It's the end of the week, and I have a special treat for you guys. So last Sunday, Coach Idris and I had a session at the gym together. So you guys get to see what it looks like to train with a trainer and since most of us don't start with leg day and I was kind of on my leg day, we're doing legs today. So you guys are going to love it. I'm excited for you guys to get to have a look at what we did. Uh, I'm just going to play exactly what we did. So if you, even if you want to go to the gym and follow along and learn as you go, then this is the video for you. Um, things that I learned during this workout definitely did learn a lot. Um, I think the coolest thing about it is was being able to step up my intensity without having to spend more time at the gym. And I know for a lot of you guys, that's important, especially for me where I'm a mom, I work full time and I just really don't have a ton of time to spend hours and hours at the gym. So this workout lasted about 45 minutes and I mean, just the differences that he made for me in this workout stepped up my intensity so much to where I was able to get my heart rate up. I was able to get a good workout in and it, you guys, it was awesome. So I definitely think that this is something that you guys should watch the full way through and just pick up the little tidbits of information in that he gives to me throughout each workout. And he showed me some workouts that I never had even done before. So my legs were toast. It was crazy all week. So that was Sunday and today's Friday, obviously, but yesterday was the first day I was able to really walk. It was, I worked out so many different muscles within my legs that I didn't even know existed. And so I was pretty sore all week long. I'm not going to lie. And it's one of those hurt so good things, right? So hopefully you guys can get a lot from this. I mean, um, just being able to work out different muscles, getting those, getting the right type of burn. He talks about being when you should eat your food, what's important about rest and eating and what plays into all of this for your workout. So definitely watch it. I'm going to post it also on YouTube. And for those who are listening to my podcast, I'll include a link to the YouTube version of this workout, but I will still have audio for you guys on what's going on. And it'll just be a short version for those who are on the podcast. But I also want to share my results with you guys because you guys I'm getting tight and I like it. And I'm not usually one that I like to share so much of my body and what's changing, but I am trying to be better about that. And I'm going to post more live videos for you guys. Um, just also um, going over results with you guys and going over what I'm doing, what tips I have from what I'm learning and I'm really excited for what the next couple weeks are going to bring for you guys with just helping you up your intensity, helping you get on the right nutritional plan. Again, I am eating very clean. Um, if you're following along with this and you want to eat as clean as I am, there's some just some little tips that I'm going to give out about that and what I've learned so far. If you're just all about the healthy eating, I also have some amazing guests coming on that is going to talk about the right types of foods and different workouts that you can do as well. Um, but I'm excited to get started. I want you guys to see what Coach Adris and I did. And he's amazing. I'm also posting all of his ways to connect with him so that if you guys want to start your own program and get the results even faster than what I'm getting them. I definitely recommend it. 
Uh, he's been a great coach, a great support, a great person to be able to have on my team through this journey. And let's take a look at the video and let me know what you learned from this video. Give me some feedback. What would you like to see? What kind of questions do you have? Let's really make our workouts work for us. And here we go. I can't remember what I did. I wrote it down on my note. Let's do let's do fifth let's do fifteen reps. Okay. And I switch off. Do you really recommend switching off or I'd rather you stay with stay with one leg, it's safer. Okay. Four. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. And switch. Good. Put them down. Okay, so that left side, that second side seemed a little bit more labored than the other side. You have a, did you, did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a reason why? Um, Do you have any injury, post in, pet, would, uh, old injury, knee issue, anything like that? Well, I did have surgery on my right, right on my right knee a couple years ago, so it's stronger. All right. I had bad news. So that might be. So that might be, okay. Yeah, because I noticed that. So so we just focus uh -huh. on, so always do that side first. Do the weaker side, always do the weaker side while you're fresh. Okay. Because if you do the good side when you're fresh, then you'll be tired when you do the weaker side. And then we, you know what I'm saying? You want to do the strong, you want to do the weaker side when you're fresh, so you're not so tired when you get to it. Okay. So. So, so start with that side first now on, and I'm gonna show you an, an, an intensity, an intensity technique real quick on this next set. So as soon as you're ready to start the next set, I'll show it to you. So don't rush, take your time, make sure you, and you wanna go as soon as your respirations slow back down. So let's say you're like, as soon as you can catch your breath, then it's time to go. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to be good to go. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So should I start with my left side this time? Well, start, with the weak, right? start with the set that's, yeah, start with that weaker side where you're, uh, you were bringing your left knee to the floor. Okay. Bringing my left knee to the floor. Yeah. And this time when you step back, you're going to step okay. back, you're going to do a lunge, you're going to do two lunges, and then you're going to stand up. Okay. So you're going to go back, go down, up, okay. down, down again and now up all the way okay. that's one now that's one okay go two three four five Six. 
Seven. Eight. Nine. And switch. Switch. See how much harder, a little bit harder that was. Yeah. So we we did less reps, but it hurt. But it was worse than doing more reps. It's not worse, but it was harder. By doing those little little half reps in between, it mm -hmm. raises your heart rate. Yeah. For sure. So that's how we increase intensity by doing partial reps, pulses. Sometimes I'll have you start out a set where you do just. Well, in fact, this next set we'll do. Um, we're going to pre-exhaust. So we're going to do. 10 up and down static, 10 static lunges, and then you're gonna do 10 regular lunges right after. Same leg. Okay. So you'll feel that intensity too, and then we'll move on to something else. Okay. So the key, the key to training is constantly taking yourself past, taking yourself further and further into fatigue. Fatigue in the muscle, fatigue in the muscle, exhausting the muscle. Most people, but a lot of women don't take it that far unless they're doing CrossFit or something serious, bodybuilding, but you're supposed to do it anyway, even if you're not competing, because that's still how you stimulate muscle. Like a lot of people think, well, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder, so I have to train that hard. No, you still have to train that hard. You just don't have, you just don't have to take it that far. <laughs> But the, but the effort still has to be the same. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so on this round, I'm doing in my knees and my So you're going to do 10, 10 static moves. So you're going to step back with the left leg, and you're going to go up and down 10 times without coming up, without coming all the way up. So one, two, yep, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Now all the way up. Woo! Now here we go. Same leg. Go back all the way. Full reps. Same leg. Same leg. Same okay. move. Move. Same leg. One. What? All the way up. Now okay. all the way up. Again. Two. All the way up. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and switch. Good. Same thing. Ten and ten. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, all the way up. And 10 more. I know, I know, I know. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten, and relax. See the difference? <laughs> you feel how your legs are a lot more pumped? 
Yeah. Yeah, see, because that, that's why you need food before you work out, because without food, you won't get that pump. You'll get a burn, but you won't get a pump. And you can't build muscle if you're not getting that pump. So you, that's why you need some glycogen in you. That's why keto diet doesn't work when you're working out, because you don't have any glycogen. And you just, you yeah. can't work out that hard without it, so. All right, so what do you do next? Um, I usually will go to do leg presses. All right, cool. The leg press is perfect. So put those away and, let's, and then to get to the leg press machine, we'll go there. I'm gonna eat my oat. I'm gonna go eat my oatmeal while you do that. There we go. All right. Yeah. So this, there's different ways to put your foot on this. Okay. All depending on where you put your feet is what part of your muscle you work. So I'm gonna just give you. We're gonna do three positions, and I want you to identify and notice where you're feeling it. So neutral is shoulder width. So you want to put your feet a little higher than that because the lower your feet are, the more it stresses on, it puts stress on the knee. Okay. The higher your feet are, it stays in line with your with your femur and your your, um, your tibia and your fibia. It stays in line with it more. So push that up. So do I have, how much weight you got on there? Um, I did, I'm not sure, I think I did right. Um, 25 on each side. All right. They're going to be kind of, is that a heavy machine or a light machine? Um, like the apparatus, is that platform heavy? Um, probably. Okay. I'm not Go ready. ahead. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Go ahead and give me 15 reps. Put your feet a little higher. Okay. There we go. And put all the pressure on your heels. Okay. I want you to not have any pressure on the balls of your feet. Push off your heels. All right. 15. And make sure your knees are in alignment right over your toes. Make sure your knees go right over your toes when you go down. Don't let them come in. Don't let them go out. Control where those knees go. Because if your knees are going collapsing inwards, you're putting stress on that inner part of your knee that tendon. If, you, if your knees are bowing out, you're doing, you're putting stress on that part of your tendon. So you want to make sure your knees are perfectly straight over your toes. <clears throat> and drive with your heels. Almost bring your toes off the platform at the top. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You can bring them down, then bring them up. Bring them down, touch, bring them off. There we go, just like, you feel that? Mm -hmm. You're going to feel that more driving through your glute and your hamstring. So do 15. When you get to 15, stop. Okay. That's 15? Yeah. Okay. Rack it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and rack it. Did you rack it already? Yeah, I don't want you to hold it. <laughs> I don't want you to hold it. Um, on a scale from one to ten, on a scale from one to ten, how hard was that? Um, weight, I, weight, weight wise. Um, I could probably do more. Okay, let's do more. <clears throat> Go up. Add twenty five. Fifteen again. So now, now I want you to bring your feet wide with your toes pointed out. And go higher again. You're gonna still go in the same foot position. I want your feet a little higher on the platform. So you can bring it. You can put your feet higher after you unrack it. So unrack it, and then make sure your feet are higher, wide, with your toes pointed out, forty about forty five degrees. There we go. This is gonna work the inner part of your thigh. Here we go. Same thing. Drive with the heels. Fifteen. You feel it more on the inside? And, and whenever, whatever you're supposed to be feeling, think about that muscle the entire set. So think about the inner, think about your inner thighs as you do it. Make sure you're feeling it there every rep.
Cool. All right. Did you feel that? You felt that on the inner thigh, right? Okay. The next one you're going to do, uh, and first let me ask you this. Was the, how hard was that? It got my heart rate going a little bit more than the loss. I want to say it's super, um, super hard. If, if, 10, if 10 is you could barely do it, and one is it, it's easy, where was it? So sorry, one was easy and 10 was hard or opposite? You could barely, you could barely do it if 10. Okay, um, I would say a seven. Okay, that's close. I want you around eight to nine, but we, we're good. I'll, I'll take seven today. So your next one is going to be with your feet almost touching, straight in front of you. So. The last set. And this is going to work the outside part of your legs. Okay. okay so we just, so we move. So when your feet are, when your feet were neutral, shoulder width, that works your overall leg. When you spread your feet wide, you're gonna feel it more on the inside part of your leg. When you put your feet together, you're gonna to feel it more on the outside part of your leg. So when you're training, when you're training and you're trying to make shape your body, you have to hit all the muscles, not just the same ones. Most people do one foot position all the time. They never change the foot position. They never change the reps. They never change the count. They never <laughs> change the tempo. They, you know, they don't. You gotta you never, I never do the same workout twice, ever. In 30 something years, every time I go in, it's a little different. So, so here we go, one more set. And you're gonna bring it right into your chest and drive it with your heels. And this time I want you to do 20 reps. Okay, so <clears throat> what was that on what was that on that same scale? Well, I'm gonna probably say an eight. So it went up a little bit. Much. All right, all right, good. Um, we're gonna do one more set. We're gonna get that closer to a ten. <laughs> you're gonna keep the same weight though. Okay. But now you're gonna do you're gonna come all the way down, go halfway up, come all the way down, and go all the way up. Okay. So you're gonna do a half rep in between four reps. Okay, and then what stance was that again? And let's do it close. Let's do the feet together. The feet together is the strongest position. That's the strongest position. As you bring your feet out, it gets harder and harder. Okay. So we're gonna do this with your feet together, just because it's gonna be harder, and I want you to be in a stronger position doing. It. Okay. So one is gonna. So we're gonna do 15 reps. 15. Yep. So it's full, half, full, half. And this half is at the bottom. There'll be times when I have you do halves at the top, but that'll be a heavier weight. So this one, you're gonna go all the way down, halfway up, all the way back down, all the way up. That's one. One. Good. Pick up the tempo just a little bit. Just a little faster. Still under control, but just a little temp, little quicker tempo. <clears throat> You're gonna start feeling your cardio here. You're gonna start feeling your lungs. Ten or fifteen. You got fifty. Got ten. That was ten. 
Go 15. If you got 15, give me 15. You're not, you're, you're quiet. Your, your quietness tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> you're like, I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, oh, so this is what working out feels like. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> you don't understand. Everybody I train, I don't care how many years they've been training. When I'm done with them, they're like, oh, I see. <laughs> because that's what I did when I I was I was already competing. I was always like some, one of the strongest guys in the gym. But I had never put the intensity like that until I met this, this guy named Andre up in, in Vancouver, Washington, when I started winning shows. He showed me intensity. I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> I've been, I've only been kind of working out. <laughs> I'm talking about, I was benching four, 500. I was doing all kind of heavy, but I wasn't doing this. <laughs> and then not only did I, he get me doing this, but then I had to cut all my weight in half because I couldn't do this with all that weight I was doing. But then eventually I built up strength and I was able to do this with the heavy weight. So. You'll, so right now you'll start noticing, oh my God. But then over time, you'll start to be able to do it. And that's when you start seeing your body get harder and harder and harder. You can't get a, a hard body without this type of intent. Heavy weight doesn't mean anything if it's not hard work in reps. A lot of people do heavy weight. They do five reps, 10 reps. The only reason you can't do 15 reps is because it's just too heavy. So you want to pick a weight that you can get to 15 and be dying, 20 and be dying at 20. Yeah. Because that volume is what hardens up the muscle. You can get, I always tell people, you can get stronger. If you get bigger from lifting, you're going to get stronger. But you can also get stronger and not get bigger, all depending on how you eat. Yeah. So with you, it's, I don't, you don't want to get big, you want to get harder. So we have to train. We have to train to get big, but eat to stay lean. We, our eating is not going to produce big muscles. It's just going to make the muscle you have better. For, in order for you to get bigger, I'd be feeding you 10 ounces of protein and carb meals four or five times a day. That will get you big. The way we're going to eat, you're not going to get bigger. Your metabolism is going to go up. And we'll keep adjusting your diet as we go, because every time you feel something, I got to make an adjustment for it. Because eventually you're going to be like, dude, this I need to eat more. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I, I need more food. Then we have to put the right foods in. Okay. okay. All right. So let's go to let's go. Let's do some stiff legged deadlifts. Work on the hamstrings. <laughs> you haven't been stiff. You haven't been deadlifts since, since the apostles had their last meal. <laughs> Since the last supper. So I just need you to either get dumbbells or a, or, or a fixed barbell and we'll do uh stiff legged. Make sure your form is right. Oh, okay. Like on the ground? Uh from, from the ground, yeah. You're not gonna go to the ground every time once you start. Because a deadlift is straight from the floor. A stiff legged deadlift, you don't have to go, you don't go to the floor. Okay. So just the bar with the yeah, bar, I have like a 30s or 40, a 30 pound bar or a 40 pound fixed bar. Okay, or if you do dumbbells, that. grab a couple of 20s, either way. Okay. All right. So I want you to stand, what did I say? 20, 20 each, is that what you want? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I want you to, and I want you to face sideways so I can see your form. Okay. All right. Have you done these before? Um, so am I just doing 
Nope. Stiff legs. So you're gonna keep your okay. legs basically straight with a slight bend in the knee. Okay. And then you're gonna, gonna lean forward with your torso, taking your taking those dumbbells to the floor. Keep going, keep going. Keeping it close. Now bring now I want you to pull those dumbbells closer to your shins. Right. Now just come straight up and stand up. And then squeeze your glutes at the top. Now reach again. Push your butt out, butt out. Come up and stand, stand up straight and squeeze your glutes. Keep your knees slightly bent. When you bend forward, push your butt away from your body. Push your butt that way. Okay. Too much knee bent, too much knee. Don't squat that much. Yeah, right there, all right. And now keep your chest up so your back stays flat. Look forward, look forward. You don't have to look at me. Pay attention to your feel. You wanna feel it. So go down, you should feel your hamstrings and glutes stretch, and then come up and squeeze. Keep your knee, keep your leg, don't bend your leg so much. Just a little slight bend, that's it. And then, lean. yeah, that's the one. Feel that? That's better. It's almost like there's a wall behind you and you can't really go back very far. You're stretching your glutes by pushing your butt away from you. Yeah, there we go. That looks good, that looks good. Six, again, reach for the reach, reach. Keep that back flat and up. Squeeze. Down, stretch, up and squeeze. Two more, stretch, up and squeeze. One more, stretch, up and squeeze. And relax, bend your knees to put them down. Bend your knees to put them down. Don't use your back, there we go. You able to feel a stretch in the hamstring at the bottom, pushing your butt away from you? Yes, 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 yes. These are what develop your hamstrings, okay? Especially for what you're looking for or what I'm looking for. The leg curl, in my opinion, is not to be done that often because it tightens up the hamstrings too much, which causes hamstring tears and groin pulls, and it'll it'll really tighten you up. I mean, it's, it's great for bodybuilding, but it's not great for normal life. <laughs> it's not good for normal. So I don't mind doing them. I just don't do a lot. I used to do them a ton when I was competing. I don't do them hardly ever anymore. <laughs> but I do the stiff legs and I'll do them occasionally, lightweight, get some reps in, but that's it. Nothing crazy. Okay. All right. Do you guys have an inner outer thigh there? What is that? Do you have an adductor, abductor machine where you do push out and pull and work your inner and outer thigh? I do. Do, you want, uh, we'll, do, we'll, do we'll do that next. Yeah, we'll do that next. Okay. More reps of this or? Yes. Let's now. Is that how is that disc again? Uh, what would you give that scale from one to ten? Um, probably a six. Let's go to let's go let's go with some thirties. I'm gonna fill this one. I can tell already. <laughs> It's a, trust me, it's a combination of everything. Cause those legs, the leg presses with your feet together. See, a lot of people don't know how to build their glutes. Like a lot of people do not, they've never really, unless you compete, you can't really tell if your glutes are developing cause you don't get your body fat low enough. Yeah. So, and you have to get, and in bodybuilding, you have to get striated glutes. You have to. And your hamstring doesn't grow, grow as much if your butt doesn't grow with it. So you have to actually get big. People think, oh, I wanna, like when women say to me, I wanna get a big butt, but I wanna, but I wanna weigh less. I'm like, you can't get a bigger muscle and it weigh less. A bigger muscle weighs more. <laughs> That's why it's bigger. So if your butt's going to grow, your weight is not going to drop like you think. See what I mean? So yeah. that's why I said, that's why with you, I don't really care what you weigh. We just got to go by how you look. Because yeah. if you want to build some muscle in your butt area, if you want to build some muscle, muscle's more dense, which means you're not going to lose as much weight because fat doesn't weigh as much, but it takes up more space. So you can have this big old arm and as, you, as long as you're building muscle underneath and taking the fat away, that muscle coming up keeps your weight up a little bit and then the fat goes. Your weight's going to go down, but it won't go down as much because you're also building muscle. So that's why at some point you got to stop worrying about the scale and just pay attention to the mirror. So here we go. 
Focus on form. Your back has to be flat, which means when you lift, every time you lift, you're gonna start hearing me say chest up, chest up, shoulders back. So when you do this, get your posture right, get your chest up, your shoulders back, and then lean forward, leading with your chest. There we go. You can push that butt away from you to stretch the hamstring. Yeah, now you got it. See, now your knees have a slight bend, not a major one. Because you don't want to lock the knees. You know that. But you also don't want to use your legs too much. You want to let your hamstring do the work. Do 15. I'm not sure where you are right now. I think around six or seven. Good job. Let's do one more of those. One more. Well, I see I see a little definition. I see a little, you know, I see a couple little muscles in your arms there. You do an eye. I see a couple. <laughs> trying to peek. Trying to peek out. Hi, ah, it's me. Hello. <laughs> I got a little fat covering me right now, but that's okay. It's a little cold, a little warmth. <laughs> I call that R night. I call that R19. <laughs> Keeps us nice and warm in the wintertime. <laughs> don't look so don't look so great in a bed in a, in a bathing in a swimsuit, but you know <laughs> can't have it all. <laughs> uh, little little fluff, little fluffing, HR fluffing stuff. <laughs> oh man! All right, here we go. Last set, best set. Make this one the best one, all right? Here we go. Back up a little bit so I can see you. Here we go, all right. Watch this perfect form, people. Perfect, perfect. enough <laughs> put him away that's a good enough for government work <laughs> go put those away and let's get to the uh, adductor abductor machines okay. those are what people do wrong most of the time so we're gonna we're gonna really teach you something today my legs are <laughs> my legs are I know, I know they feel a little noodly, a little noodly. Yeah. <laughs> My legs feel like skisketti. <laughs> not, sp not spaghetti, but skisketti. <laughs> that's why. That's how I used to say spaghetti when I was a kid. I couldn't say spaghetti, so I was like skisketti. <laughs> been a while since I've done these. I'm trying to remember. Okay. I know you have one. I've done one before here. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's been a while since I've done these. Evidently, you can't even find them. I know. <laughs> well, I switched to them recently, too, so. Yeah, yeah. 
Sounds good. <laughs> okay, I have not You're like, <laughs> You're like, wow, they added a new wing to the gym. <laughs> no, it's always been there. <laughs> All right. So is that is that the one that does both inner and outer? You just spin this thing around. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So uh, whichever one you want to start first, we'll, we can go. We'll do three sets of inner and then three sets of outer. And that'll be the end. And that'll be the workout for the day. So start whichever one you want to start with, inner or outer. And if you haven't done, okay, that's the outer. Okay, so when you do the outer, you can go, You first of all, you have to go heavy. Have to go heavy. It doesn't work if it's light. The glute muscle, the hamstring is a very strong muscle and it needs to be stressed. So you want to do, do that with some weight. The other one, the inner, if you haven't done it in a while, you do not want to push that very hard because you will be immobile for days you'll be in a wheelchair because the inner thigh that groin area it gets it gets sore so hard and so bad and so it's not fun so the outer you can go for it even today even having not done it but the inner we're going to take it easy on the inner <laughs> so go ahead so we're going to start on the outer let me see you get give me 10 reps and i'm gonna fix your form as you go Okay, so I want you to pay attention to something too. Where are you feeling it when you do that? Keep going. Point to your point to where you feel it. Right behind your knee. No, that that's the pressure from the pad. Where are you? What muscle are you feeling work? Do you feel any muscle working on you when you do that? On the top of your quad? But on the top, on the top, okay. You shouldn't be feeling it there. Okay, you shouldn't be feeling it. You should be feeling that in your glute area. So what I want you to do is lay back. I want you to push your butt forward. Push your butt to the front of the seat. Keep pushing. Keep pushing your butt to the front of the seat. I want you to put your hands on those handles right there. Use the handles next to the thing. Nope, 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 yeah. And I want your chest up and lean back. And when you push your legs all the way out, I want you to hold it out as far as you can. Hold it out as wide as you can. Stay right there. Stay right there, don't let them come back in. Where you feel it now? Yeah. That's where we're supposed to be feeling it, okay? So now I want you to do little short motions in and out. Short motions 25 times. Go out as far as you can and come in about three inches and out as far as you can every time. 25 reps. Where'd you feel, now you feel that in your glute, don't you? Yeah. The, the mistake everybody makes is a lot of people think squats build your glutes. You probably think that too. But you can't contract your glute, but you can't do a muscle, a butt contraction by pushing your butt out. You can't squeeze your butt. Like in your position right now, try to squeeze your butt right now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Lean forward. No. Lean forward. Now try squeezing your butt right now. It's harder, yeah. You can't do it. Now lean back. Push your butt forward. Lift your hips and squeeze. You see how much you can squeeze your glutes? So you have to be in this position to work your glutes. Okay. Everybody thinks squats, squats work your quads. They don't work your glutes. Okay, they stretch your glutes and stretching your glute is important, but that's what we did with the stiff legged deadlifts. When you were leaning forward, you were stretching them, but when you came at the top, you were squeezing them. 
you are stretching them at the bottom and squeezing them at the top. So on this, what I'm making you do is that by keeping your that position way out, I'm keeping the contraction the entire time. We're not letting it go at all. We're just holding on to that contraction. So the stiff-legged deadlifts and this, and also the hip raises where people lay their shoulders on the bench and put weight in their, their belly, weight in their waist, and they push their hips up. That's the same thing as we're doing here. It's the same exact thing, except you're just doing it on a free bar. So let's do two more sets, 25 reps, feeling it right in your glute. Here we go. Holding those handles again. And I also want you to lift, and also I want you to lift your butt up off the seat just a little bit to really get that squeeze. Feeling that, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see you leaning. Yeah, go up. If you yeah, go up. Yep. You want to do this as heavy as you possibly can, but you need to get those reps. So as long as you're doing 25, go as heavy as you can. I'm at the lowest weight. Yeah, you don't because the thing that people don't understand, especially women, when you train with lighter weight, it doesn't stress anything. There's no stress involved. And muscle doesn't respond to that. Muscle only responds when you put it under a lot of stress. So certain exercises like this one, it's because you're on a machine, go as heavy as you can. Because if it's too heavy, you just put it down. It's not gonna hurt you. Yeah. On a free weight, different. If you go too heavy there, because it can get hurt. So yeah. on machines, go, go for it. Because all you gotta do is put it down. Nice. Now turn them inside. We're gonna do the inner thigh. This one you want to lighten it up. You do not want to be going crazy with these. Now with this one, all I want you to do today is just do enough reps to feel it starting to burn a little bit, and then stop. Whatever that number is, okay. But opposite of what you were doing before leaning back, now you're gonna actually lean forward and sit up tall. So I want you to push your butt back and lean forward just like that. And I want you to think of pushing with your heels instead of your legs, instead of your knees. Think about your knees are nice and easy, but your feet are doing the pushing. You're gonna really feel it when you do that. Watch. <laughs> you feel it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it, got pretty, it gets pretty hard when you do it that way. So make sure you go light enough. But push with your feet, not your knees. And just stop when you feel it burning. Don't do any more. Good. Yeah, don't, don't. Every week, go a little harder, a little harder, a little harder. And pretty soon you'll be able to go all the way. But don't do that prematurely on these. These will kill you. <laughs> they will kill you. <laughs> like if I miss, if I miss one week of these, I, I, I start on, I start from scratch again. One week. 
Because if I go back and do what I did before, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be so miserable. I'm gonna hate myself. So <laughs> I don't mind a sore chest or back or butt, but that inner thigh is not fun. Good. You see what I'm saying? You see that burn you're getting? Yeah. 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 Don't do do one more. Don't push it. As soon as you feel the burn, stop. And then we'll you know we'll we'll see how you feel tomorrow and the next day. Now this is this is how you judge when to go up. If tomorrow and the next day you're like that wasn't so bad, then we go harder the next time. Okay. What people tend to do, and I hate this. And a lot of trainers do this, and I absolutely hate it. Is they think like, kill yourself. The first no, because the person doesn't want to come back. Number one. Yeah. Number two, it takes longer to heal from the workout, so you can't work out again for days. Yeah. Because you you're not your body's not used to those kind of workouts. So so don't you know? I always tell people don't ever don't ever let a person train you that's trying to kill you. When you when you're just beginning, as if that's going to like jumpstart your fitness. No, it's going to make you never want to do it again. Yeah, and that happens. That happens a lot. My girlfriend actually has a messed up knee. She showed me this video of her doing leg presses, and the whole time I'm like, your knees are wobbling all over the place. And she's like, well, yeah, my knee actually got hurt and it's been hurting ever since. I'm like, yeah, I bet. But yeah. see, she didn't. She was sitting there going, well, look, I did five plates. I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> five plates are supposed to look like smooth and strong. And I go, the whole time your knees were doing this. Yeah. So a lot of times people have this false sense of, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to power through. And I'm like, yeah, that's how you blow out a knee and mess up a shoulder by powering through the wrong way. It's a way to power through, and that ain't it. Yeah. So one more, sit forward. Remember, sit forward. Yeah, these you sit forward. Don't go too much. All right, that's enough. All right, you're done for today. That's enough. I, I want to see how you feel, how you recover from that. Um, the most important thing is how you eat the rest of the day to recover. Eating is part of recovery. Not only is rest, but eating is part of that. So if you're not eating right and you're not resting right, all this other stuff doesn't matter. I mean, it's not that it doesn't matter, but you're not going to get everything out of it that you should. You know, the key, the key to yeah. good training the key to good training is everything we do, we do for a reason. Every move, every rep, every set. We ain't throwing away sets or throwing away reps by doing stuff that's unnecessary. Okay. That way your workouts are shorter. Your workout, like we did that in pretty much 45 minutes. Awesome. You know what I mean? A good workout doesn't take that long, <laughs> does it? When you train intense. Now, could you imagine if I had pushed you? We wouldn't have lasted but 30 minutes, maybe. If I'd have been like shortening your rest periods, get back on. Because when you shorten the rest periods, it, it adds intensity. Because you know, you're still out of breath doing the next set. That happens, yeah. but that happens as you get in better shape. You'll start noticing, wow, that wasn't so hard. Let me go a little harder. Let me go a little heavier. Let me do five more reps. Let me do my half reps. Let me do some pulses. Let me do, then we go to supersets. Um, We'll go from squats, like you do the, the leg press machine. Like a perfect example, that leg press machine that we were doing. You haven't learned sit. I haven't taught you sissy squats yet. You're gonna, you're gonna love them. No, you're not. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, but when I was like training for a con for a show, I would do that leg press machine with like 15 plates on each side, with, with dumbbells for dumbbell squats with 100 pound dumbbells. Wow. So I would do I would do the leg press for 20, 
the dumbbells for 20, the dumbbell squats for 20, then I put those down and then I would do half reps for 20 at the end of that, three sets of that. Yeah, those half reps are killing me. I like that. Yeah. I'm totally making sure I'm adding that in for sure. Yeah, that is something. So, you, and so that's how you increase the intensity. And I would do that for three sets and then I would do it, then I would move on to something else. So the better shape you get, you just want to continue to push yourself, continue to push the intensity, the reps. You can do it by reps, pulses, um, form. There's a multitude of ways to increase intensity. Okay. So okay. I'll see you at noon tomorrow. Hey, awesome. Have a one Sunday. Yeah. Have a good yeah. day. Tell your, tell your man I said hi. I will. Will do. Tell okay, your girl bye. too.